Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got a video in a new series we're starting called A Picture's Worth a Thousand Words, where we're going to go through some pictures of the ship and talk about what are the cool things you can see in them. We're filming this video in one of the former warrant officer staterooms, which has since been turned into an office, but you can probably see the bed behind me that's now acting as a shelf. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just going to hop on the computer here. We're looking at a series of five pictures from the Puget Sound Navy Yard in 1945. So these are uh, a very common type of high resolution picture that um, you see every time a ship gets out of a major yard period. The yard takes pictures of that to document the, the work that was done. Oftentimes the work is ongoing when this is going on. Uh, so this particular yard period is the only major period that the battleship got during World War II after she was fully uh, in commission during the Pacific War. Now, interestingly, because New Jersey just came out of the yard and was most decorated because she missed less battles during her yard period than Iowa missed in hers, uh, New Jersey's crew believed that their ship was going to be chosen as the site of the Japanese surrender. Um, particularly because they were in the best material condition and Missouri and Wisconsin were coming up for their yard periods because they'd just been in the war for several months. Now, instead of that, uh, New Jersey is made Admiral Spruance's flagship and sent to the Philippines with 5th Fleet instead of into Tokyo Bay with 3rd Fleet. There was still some fear that the Japanese were going to pull funny business and attack the ships in Tokyo Bay while they were sitting ducks. Uh, and so the U.S. Navy kept the bulk of its force under Admiral Spruance outside of the surrender ceremonies. And, and New Jersey was his flagship for that. Now, this does mean that we are Spruance's only flagship that's left as a museum. And that's an interesting thing in its own right. But it means that we're not the world's most expensive desk. That title goes to the Battleship Missouri, which was used for the surrender ceremony. So... Uh, Near the end of the Pacific War, after Iowa's already gone through her yard period, New Jersey is the next one up to go back to the West Coast, to Puget Sound, and get her work done. So we're going to go through here, look at some of the work that uh, was done, and what we can tell from these pictures. All right, so here we are at photo one, which is a bow on view. Starting at the nose, you can see that... Uh, the 20 millimeter gun tub is still there in place. For whatever reason, both Iowa and Wisconsin, the Atlantic Fleet battleships still have their 20 millimeter gun tub, but Missouri and New Jersey lost theirs sometime in the early 50s. It's unclear why those two lost them uh, and the other two retained them. Uh, interestingly, it does look like ours is flush to the deck. Whereas on the ones you go on nowadays, uh, you have to step up onto them. And that may be a difference in the gun tubs, or it may just be me not being able to see uh, that well in this picture. I never noticed that there were railings around the back face of the gun tub so that the gunner can, can really lean back there doing uh, high elevation shots without fear of falling down the deck. Continuing aft along the deck, you can see that there's a lot of hoses out. Um, it looks to me like those are pneumatic hoses for needle guns. It looks like, uh, particularly on this port side of the ship, on the right-hand side of the picture, uh, you can see the decks kind of chipped up where they might be uh, chipping paint. Uh, continuing aft from there. You can see that uh, the 20 millimeter guns are under tarps. This drives me crazy because allegedly during this yard period a number of 20 millimeter guns are removed and replaced with twin mount guns. Possibly as many as eight uh, twin mount 20 millimeter guns. But with them all under tarps in this photo series we can't really tell how many uh, or where those gun positions are and if they actually got the full loadout. Because there is some evidence that even though eight were authorized for each Iowa class battleship, 
uh, and supposedly 12 mounts are supposed to be removed, we're not sure if this work was actually done or not. If you can notice that this area is very crowded between the hoses covering the deck and all of the ready service ammunition lockers, which are the uh, square boxes, or excuse me, rectangular boxes that are around all the 20 millimeter gun tubs. Going aft, you can see that five of the forward 16 inch gun barrels are at about 15 degrees and one is at five degrees. They all have Tompions in. Uh, interestingly, these Tompions look like they're just wooden plugs. They don't look like anything fancy. Um, whereas later in the ship's career, we'd see like brass fixtures on the ends of these Tompions. It does look like actual Tompions and not just a uh, canvas cover over the muzzle of the gun, because you can see it doesn't cover the whole end of the barrel, which um, we have video footage of them basically blowing compressed air through the barrel to blow the uh, canvas covers off, which seems like what they used in a war zone. So one thing that's worth pointing out is uh, you can see the square bridge. This was the major uh, exterior uh, change to New Jersey during this time period. She had been built with an open bridge just like Iowa. They decided that wasn't a good idea, so she had a round bridge experimentally installed, and that's what she carried through most of World War II. Missouri and Wisconsin were built with this square type bridge. Iowa got hers changed from an open bridge to the square bridge during her yard period, and now New Jersey has had her round bridge changed to the square bridge. So they all end up with the same bridge. Now let's move on to picture number two. This shows the ship's superstructure. And I'm going to zoom in on the 04 level of the bridge just behind the windows, you see what looks like a big striped tic-tac-toe board. Uh, and it's got a couple of fuzzy logos over it. We believe that this is showing the ship's kill board, which should show an island with some bombardment numbers, a Japanese destroyer sunk, the Mayakazi, and it should show 20 Japanese flags. Now, originally, New Jersey had an all navy blue camouflage scheme. I believe that's measure 22. During this yard period, she gets converted over to measure 21, which is blue for the hull and gray for everything above the lowest level of the hull. So what we're seeing there with the tic-tac-toe board is they didn't, or they haven't yet, gone in and painted that detail uh, so it's still the Japanese flags on the dark blue, and they painted the light gray around it, but left the rest of the board intact. So, so the dark stripes we see are the original dark blue paint around the Japanese flags uh, that seems to be retained. By the Korean War, the kill board is painted over, and there's no evidence of it there anymore. We've been talking about replacing it, but haven't gotten around to it yet. But this picture is my evidence for what it looks like and how big it is because we know how tall that, that uh, bulwark is there, so we can figure out how big the flags were for reproducing it one day. Still, you notice that the 20 millimeter guns are under cover, so it's impossible to tell uh, pretty conclusively if they're twin or single. You can notice that the uh, five inch guns have most of their doors and access hatches open, so you notice on the forward end there's an access hatch that's open to get at the machinery in there. They're, they're clearly doing some maintenance work on these five inch guns, and that's why they're all rotated at weird angles and have doors open. Seems like there's a lot less hoses and things here amidships. Uh, you can actually look inside this uh, port side forward uh, 40 millimeter gun tub um, on the O1 level and see the racks for the ready service ammunition. You can see that here in port, the ready service ammunition is not installed. Close in photographs like this, the really high resolution ones we can zoom in on, are uh, one of the ways that we check and see, hey, are there numbers written on the 40 millimeter guns? Because that has been an ongoing debate, which guns had which names on the Iowa class battleships. Uh, 
on Mizora, you can see pictures during her shakedown cruise of numbers on those guns. She got all those guns from day one. On New Jersey, they added four of the quad mounts during the course of the war. Uh, so there's some debate as to whether they have the same names or if um, they retained the original names for the first 16 and then went back and named the other ones, 17, 18, 19, and 20, uh, regardless of their position. On the 06 level of the superstructure, uh, you can see that the ship's bell is mounted on the underside of the 08. There's always been debate about whether the ships carried their bells or not, and some ships, like uh, the aircraft carrier Hornet, uh, her bell was discovered in a warehouse, proving that it was not carried in battle. Her bell is made out of brass, uh, and it was probably removed to save top weight when they were adding any aircraft guns. Here on the 08 level, you can see that New Jersey does have her bell installed. It's not in a warehouse, or at least one of her bells, uh, and our bells are made out of steel, so as to not use that uh, precious wartime material. Just under the bell, you can see one of the new gunnery directors for the 40 millimeters. Six of these gun directors are added uh, because they have a blind fire capability. Um, there's debate about whether they were installed during the war or immediately after the war. Here is proof that uh, at least some of the six have been installed in wartime. Otherwise, we're gonna move on to uh, picture number three. Uh, so this picture shows you a little bit further aft uh, on the superstructure. Interesting, the, the boat davits are there for the 26 inch uh, motor lifeboats, but uh, the boat is not in place. It's been probably taken off for maintenance. It's a really good picture of these amidships gun tubs. It's interesting some of the 40 millimeter guns appear to be the dark blue color of the deck and side of the ship, and some of them appear to be the light gray color of the hull and superstructure. It may be that they're still in the process of repainting everything to light gray. Like I said, uh, all of the major hot work would be done at this point. Everything new has been installed, but things like uh, painting and uh, chipping, we can tell is still going on. Now, this picture proves that all six of those new 40 millimeter directors, I think they're Mark 63s off the top of my head, have been installed. You can see the uh, two by the aft funnel and two more at the after fire control tower. Seems like some of the 20 millimeter guns here even have their uh, gun barrels removed some are under cover, some are removed, uh, so it's still difficult to tell which ones, if any, got replaced with the twin mounts. Some of these you can tell are definitely single mounts. Looking at the top of the after stack, you can see that there is a black band around it. We recently had some debate as we've been working on the aft stack um, where there's been some metal that's rusted through that's, that's thinner and a slightly different material than the rest, uh, when that metal was installed. And uh, this black band proves that that was originally intended to be an open space for sucking air into the intakes, and that it was covered up probably when the ship was in mothballs in 91. So we're in the process of preparing that right now. Now let's go on to uh, the next picture, picture number four. Ooh, okay, okay, look at this. Notice that just after turret three, and notice turret three had to be rotated to be out of the way, uh, there is a rail system and there's a little like minor car with some big blocks on it. They have a, an engineer conducting an inclination test right now. So basically you install these rails and these weights, you move them from one side to the other, and you see how much the ship rolls uh, to see if she's actually a stable enough platform now that they've added all this new weight. Now obviously uh, the ship passes her inclination tests and those uh, rails will be removed before the ship goes to sea. Another interesting thing to look at here is the Mark 51 director on top of turret number three. 
this is the director for the 40 millimeter gun above it, notice that the gun shield folds down. So you can see that it's laying completely open on the deck. So that is interesting. That, that is a feature built in the ship. Ooh, okay. And here you can see the ship's second bell on the after superstructure. By the 1980s, when the helicopter control booth goes into this after superstructure on the O, uh, what is that? The O3 level above the uh, above turret number two, excuse me, above turret number three, they have to move that bell from there and it ends up forward under the disc cone cage antenna at the bow. Here you can see that it is in place. The battleship definitely had both of her bells on board during the war. Not too much else. Let's go to picture number five and look at the full fantail. Uh, here you can see the catapults have been rotated out of the way uh, so they can put the clination test rails on there. Uh, notice they've got the weights on different ends back here. I'm not sure if they're still in the process of moving them to go from one side to the other or if they're doing some weird test with the things at a diagonal. Uh, let's see, you can see that there is a boat in the water just under the fantail. This does not appear to be one of the battleship's 26-foot boats. So it's probably some work boat from the yard here. It's interesting, all of the life rafts that normally sit under the catapults have been removed. unclear why or where they've taken them. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, that is a great photo shot of the work going on at the Puget Sound Navy Yard in uh, June of 1945. So just near the end of the war, Battleship New Jersey gets some final upgrades that uh, puts her on par with the two battleships that had are, that had uh, been completed last, Missouri and Wisconsin, and Iowa that had just finished her yard period. So now they should all be around the same baseline with the same up-to-date electronics, the same anti-aircraft suite, and the same command and control facilities, uh, and even the same camouflage scheme. And they're all painted in this, uh, I can never remember which one's measure 21, which one's measure 22, but the blue hall and the haze gray superstructure. So uh, this is a very interesting photo set. Uh, I absolutely love these yard photos because they are so high resolution. Uh, and they're usually taken from the top down, which means that the photographer probably climbed up onto the cranes at the Navy Yard to take photos down, uh, down onto the ship. They're, they're great because you can see the crew standing around the deck. Uh, you can see yard workers moving around doing stuff, and uh, you can you really get the impression that there's a bustle of activity going on here from all of the hoses and cables and things run out on the ship, different guns rotate in different directions and hatches open. These sorts of photo analyses are very important for us as historians to find out when stuff happened on the ship. A blueprint is just a plan. It doesn't necessarily mean that it got carried out. So being able to go to a picture like this and confirm that things are happening when they're said they're happening is very important for us from an archeological point of view and a historic point of view. So uh, we'd like to make this an ongoing series. So if there are other photos you'd like to see us analyze like this in the future, head over to my Facebook page linked in the comment section down below and shoot us a message with that picture in it or series of pictures and we'll get to it in the near future. Uh, do it over on the Facebook page and not here on the YouTube channel because YouTube's real funky about posting pictures down below. Uh, and don't just try to describe to me, you should do the picture of the ship firing her guns. I have no idea which one you're talking about. Send me a link to the actual picture. So what are some other cool features that you noticed in these pictures that I didn't mention? Let us know in the comment section down below. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to help support the channel and our museum. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the museum. Thanks for watching.